There is an electrical variant to the magnetic propulsion system that I proposed in the first video. Though electrical fields are more difficult to deal with than magnetic fields from a technical perspective, it is easier to visualize the function of the mechanism. We begin with the same proposed inertial polarization of a neutral particle by means of rapid rotation. A charge forms as before, positive on the inside of the rotation and negative on the outside, with a line connecting both charges passing through the center of rotation and lying in the plane of rotation. These charges are hypothesized to form on the two foci of an ellipsoidal field that results from the particle's reference frame being unable to respond instantly to the displacement of the particle. And these are not the full charge of an electron or proton, but rather a small partial charge incapable of existing outside of the single field, thus stretched by acceleration. Now let the rotating particles pass between two charged plates that cover the rotating particles. We have then that the temporary positive charge formed by inertial polarization will be attracted to the negative plate and repelled by the positive plate. The opposite will be true of the negatively inertially polarized charge. All vectors in the system will then cancel out except for the centrifugal component normal to the plane of rotation, which must necessarily exist in violation of the law of conservation of momentum and also by logical extension, the first law of thermodynamics, rendering both of these laws statistical mechanical functions rather than a priori rules of logic. Again, it is unlikely that a manifestation of this effect would occur at low energy levels, as this would already have been observed at some point in the past 200 years of rigorous experimentation, and the observed and catalogued properties of UFOs support the view that the power requirements are fairly extravagant, though not unobtainable, especially in a proof of feasibility experiment. Still, it is unlikely that any official experiments can be conducted by serious scientists in a laboratory setting, because to do so would jeopardize the careers of all concerned if the hypothesis were proven incorrect. They would all receive the fleischmann pons treatment and be done in by pundits. Experiments would have to be performed in the 16th century style of corpse dissections in the dead of night while the pundits sleep. If the theory fails, no one is harmed. If successful, the experimenters are killed by the government. 